Welcome to the Backhand Studio. Today we're going to talk about a small sensation. It's plastic injection molded product with lubricating um, properties. Today I have two experts here with me. On one side Florian Parland, our head of research and development anti-friction coatings and Dr. Thomas Lö, the application expert um, anti-friction coatings. And uh, today we're going to talk about microcapsule technology and for me this is a completely new topic. Uh, that's the reason why I have two experts here with me. But I think it's a very interesting topic for professionals working in constructions but also non-professionals like me. So uh, Thomas, why don't you start us off with a short introduction into the topic. Yeah, thanks Benita. Maybe um, I just want to give you a real world example why um, the microcapsule development was a reasonable uh, development for us. Uh, because if you think of, of your daily life and you try to move a, a cabinet or a door which are on the plastic gliders and eventually when it gets more dirty or older then it gets very hard to move. And so you try to push more and more and eventually it breaks down to some, at some point in time. And, uh, Usually what you then do or try to use is oils and greases for lubrication so that the door is moving easier. Uh, the problem is when it gets dirty, when it gets smacked, then it's, it does not look very nice and uh, even it is not very uh, good in a function. Yeah. Uh, so the challenge for us was uh, try to lubricate those kind of uh, sliders without uh, feeling oily and greasy that collects some dust. And that was uh, the development uh, with microcapsules do this. Yeah, I, I think I, I can relate to that, uh, to the problems you've just uh, talked about. Um, Florian, why don't you uh, explain us how the microcapsules now actually work? Yeah, sure. Um, so a microcapsule um, is uh, a, a capsule. So that means we have a, a content of a microcapsule, so a so-called core material. This can be a liquid or a solid. So we are using, for example, lubricating oils or waxes inside as a core. And uh, we have a polymeric shell around the core. And um, um, in some, it is uh, uh, on a micrometer scale. So we are um, developing um, and defining microcapsules in a couple of micrometers. And uh, by that, um, we are able to separate the core material from the outside of the shell. So, and that is a, um, the science behind a microcapsule. Mm -hmm. So, when you were developing this technique, um, did you want to develop something like this, or how, how did the development in general happen? Like, is it something like completely new, or can we find it somewhere else already? Um, so, it is not really new. It is um, using an existing technology, but um, for us, um, it is a technology uh, we started to use uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, um, at first, we tried to incorporate microcapsules in our anti friction coatings. So, our anti friction coatings are yeah, coatings um, uh, containing normally solid lubricants, so completely dry on the surface. But uh, the idea was to combine uh, a liquid um, lubricant with uh, anti-friction coating. And um, so we incorporated microcapsules into an um, a, a anti-friction coating. And we were able to combine uh, both worlds liquid and solid, and um, this was the first time we spoke about lubrication on demand. Oh, okay. So, since it was already a new dimension for the anti-friction coatings, Thomas, um, what can you say, what does it mean for the injection molding, um, the microcapsule technology? Yeah. We need a good question. Uh, as Florian just uh, uh, explained, we start with a coating that uh, contains the microcapsule within the small uh, layer of coating. And the drawback, of course, is if you once rub off the coating, there is no lubrication anymore. That's mm -hmm. the first drawback. The second drawback of uh, and microcapsules in a coating was um, so that it, of course, uh, comprises another um, processing step, which in turn is an additional cost. So we thought, 
hmm, does it make sense to incorporate the microcapsules directly in the in the plastic, in the plastic materials, so that the that the lubrication is all, uh, always there uh, if the part is still there. So and uh, and that uh, was the the birth of the idea of generating microcapsules in the plastic. And of course, plastics are produced, or the components and parts of plastics are produced in an, in an injection molding machine or injection molding processes. And f in that process, microcapsules can play a big role. Yeah. Um, Florian, maybe you can tell me something if it is somehow measurable for us to see, like, is there any data where it's like, yeah, there is a change when we u have or use the microcapsules. Um, can you tell me something about that? Yes, I can. Um, so um, on the diagram, um, you can see that um, we uh, performed a tribological test in, in our company. Um, we used one of our test rigs for that, uh, uh, a sliding steel ball, um, sliding on a plastic material. Mm -hmm. And um, we are measuring the coefficient of friction over the time or the distance. Um, and um, we incorporated um, different amounts of uh, microcapsules um, in a plastic material and um, we uh, compared then um, the results and you can see that by an increasing amount of microcapsules we have a decrease in the coefficient of friction. So mm -hmm. we have a reduction of friction and wear by using our microcapsules in a plastic compound. Yeah, that seems uh, actually really amazing. Um, maybe as one last question for you, Thomas, uh, to wrap it all up here. Maybe you can give us an outlook for the microcapsule technology. What can we expect in the future? Oh, well, we are uh, just at the beginning of our long journey with the microcapsules. As you said, and as we discussed now, we have microcapsules as a lubrication on demand function. But you can also think of using the microcapsules as an acoustic damping. Uh, component in a plastic so that you can that you are able to uh, damp specific acoustic frequencies in a part just noise cancelling is one big focus and the other focus is if you imagine to fill the microcapsules with a phase change material then you get a compound that it has a capability of storing energy storing heat and releasing heat in a in a specific and smart manner so that you have a uh, latent heats so and uh, that could be a very nice opportunity since you store uh, heat and you store coolness and uh, that's a part of the energy efficiency well that seems amazing I'm excited for the future and I think we can have some more talks then and with that being said, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to the both of you for joining me today for this interview. If you have any further question for um, or about the micro capsule technology, feel free to call Thomas. He will help you with any of your problems. And um, I think thank you for watching. And uh, maybe we we'll see you next time.